Jay, it's no longer a penalty box segment, is it? It's not. It used to be with the Mazda 2, the Hyundai Accent, the old tracks, which was not this tracks. Those were cars you didn't really want to take for like a long drive. They had four wheels and a steering wheel, but not much to offer beyond that. Versus now, the segment has some strong, strong options. What do you have? 2024, first ever, and though for all new, Buick and Vista, and it's the mid-trim ST. What do you got? This is the Chevy Trax Active, and it's actually one of two top trims that GM offers for the Trax. You can get the Active, which comes with like black fender flares, a roof rack, and more like a SUV off-roady kind of vibe, or you can get the Sporty RS, which our colleague Jill McIntosh drove recently in red. This is the top trim. So base to base, we have a $5,300 price difference between the Trax and the Invista, but as tested with the mid-trim Buick and the top-trim Chevy, that price difference is only around $3,000. So Jay, what are we trying to find out here today? Which has the most value, which is the best for daily driving, and which one you should choose? So the Buick is working up against a price disadvantage being a slightly more premium product and it uses the same engine, so. And it's got a similar wheelbase and a lot of the inside bits like the HVAC controls and the gear lever and the seats are pretty evenly matched. But it's more than that. It's dry feel on city streets and on the highway and fuel consumption and cargo space and all the reasons you've tuned in to watch this comparison. Well, should we hop in the Buick and see if that uh, upscale tuning makes a difference? Absolutely. Let's go for a drive. Uh, aren't you supposed to be up here? You're in the wrong seat. I'm not though. Want to know why? Why? We're talking about head space and leg space in the rear seat to the Chevrolet Trax. The Invista slopes and it kind of falls off the edge of a cliff. But with a more upright design here, I've got lots of headroom and you can see all the legroom I have. And I invite you, my friend Clayton, to pull that seat back all the way. I hope it crushes you like that scene from Star Wars. <laughs> That's it. You got any more? That's it. That's all it's got. Okay, so look at all the space I have. A couple of other points here. You got a USB-A and a USB-C. Thank you, Chevrolet, for getting rid of the hump for the middle passenger. It's still a bad place to be no matter what car you're in. But if you do happen to find yourself in the middle seat of a 2024 Chevrolet Trax, it's not as bad as some other vehicles. And you don't have a little armrest to pull down, so you don't have any cup holders or there's definitely no heated seats at this price point. But it's still fairly comfortable. They look pretty good. And behind the passenger seat, there is a little bit of space for storage. But okay, that all sounds good, but you're also in the Chevy Trax. We said we'd start in the Buick, not even in the right car. So wrong car, wrong seat. We should fix that right now. Let's go fix it. Jay. Clayton. Do you like to drive distracted? Only on Thursdays. Well, that's because I've got the specs here, so you don't have to. So. Put your right foot down. What do you feel? Mild exhilaration. That mild exhilaration is courtesy of a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder that both these cars share. Same exact engine and transmission. And what does this guy control? He controls what gear I'm in. And that is controlled by a six speed conventional automatic, which normally we don't get that excited for a conventional automatic in a car, but actually in the subcompact segment, most of these competitors are CVTs, and CVTs are fine, but usually with these small cars, with these small engines, the effect can be a lot like a snowmobile. Very much so, and it gets loud, and it gets droney, and every vehicle on the market today is safe. You can still get up to highway speeds, regardless if it's a CVT or geared, but there's just something a little better as far as the drive feel goes with a geared transmission. It just drives a little nicer. And I think that's the big thing is that like, it used to be when you hopped into one of these like really small subcompacts, you were so aware that you were driving a tiny car. You just heard the engine going like, and just trying so hard to go anywhere. Uh, but in this, it's so nice. It's refined and it's above its price point, I feel. And we've got some curves ahead. Why don't you go ahead and try out that Watts Link rear suspension. Tell me how it feels. Already, it feels head and shoulders above the tracks. 
And yes, it's part of a package. You have to opt in the for experience it. The Experience Buick package. And I'm experiencing Buick right now. Sure and are. I'm very happy with it. Again, consider the size, consider the price point. It's a subcompact crossover, but at higher speeds, it's relatively quiet. It's so quiet, and I think that's why we both agree the Buick has the better sound system, despite the fact that it has the same six speaker sound system as the Trax. It's the exact same, but I think the, something about the shape of the interior and the sound ending in here is just a little nicer. It sounds better, especially when you're playing the Noble Rogues. Exceptional Noble Rogues, for that matter. Or Peter Blakeney's band, The Wolfen Boys. I thought his band was called Pretzel Logic. That's his in real life band. He has a studio band too. Oh. Yeah. All right, shout out Peter Blakeney, whatever band you're in. Yes. Now, it's not all roses in here. For example, can you see what's behind you? If I don't move my head at all, yes. So, like, if there was a Sasquatch behind you, would you be able to see the Sasquatch? Parts of it. And yes, I know the Buick has a smaller rear window. And my only real gripe design-wise is there's no rear wiper. And I'm looking at BMW's X2, and I'm looking at BMW's X4, and the Kia EV6, and the Hyundai Ioniq. You need a rear wiper in Canada. It rains, it snows, there's sleet, we have all sorts of weather. And yes, you could probably get a rain repellent and put it on, but that gets really annoying. Yeah, I don't get this thing where like it's fashionable to not have a rear wiper. Folks, Porsche 911 Turbo S's have rear window wipers. It's not unfashionable. You can have a wiper on a car, especially in this fastback roof where it's almost horizontal. Like this morning, I woke up and there was dew covering the car, which is not a problem in the tracks, but in this, I have to wait while the defroster kind of clears some lines out and then I can begin to make out what's behind me. It's for life in Canada, I would expect it. And I agree with you, Jay. I think that's the other thing too, is that when we're talking about the price point of this car, which starts under 30K, and the driving experience you get is superb for the price. It is absolutely superb. If I have a crank, it's at the ride, well, it's a little bumpy. It's got big 19 inch wheels, which are optional. This car has it. It's a little bumpier than other cars like the Kicks, which I dislike everything else about that vehicle, but it, it does ride better. I'm surprised you had anything nice to say about the kicks. I do not like the kicks. I think going down to an 18 inch wheel might serve to soften the ride out a little bit. Uh, but just to jump back a couple of minutes, that Watts Link suspension upgrade, it's worth it. Absolutely worth it. What Jay's talking about is the setup of the rear suspension. The Trax has a typical torsion beam setup. It's got two wheels that are not driven, joined by a beam. It goes up and down on springs. That's your suspension. It's cheap, it's cost effective, and it's space effective, but it doesn't allow a lot of control of those wheels laterally. What this car has is the optional Experience Buick package. For $1,200, gets you weird things like a sunroof, black mirror caps, and a Watslink rear suspension. It's so weird. What a Watslink does is basically join both the wheels together at a central point to control their motion through the travel so that you get better contact with the tire on the ground. Now, Jay, one thing that you like about this car that I don't is the screen. I like that it's one long singular panel, two screens, but it's one big piece of plastic. Now, on the Chevrolet side, you can very clearly see it's two panels, put one in front of the other. I'm not a fan of the quirky looks behind it. I prefer the streamlined look here, and I feel it fits the Buick brand better. It's a premium look. It's a premium design move here. And yes, the HVAC controls are the same, and you switch out badges on the steering wheel, but just, there's an upscale feel in the interior that I just don't get with the tracks. And I've tried to like the tracks as far as the inside goes, but I think that GM played it smart by making the tracks a little more on the playful side and making the Buick a little more on the refined side. Well, do you think we've said it all about the Buick and Vista? Is it time to drive its cousin, the Chevy Trax? Almost, 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 almost. You lose some cargo space. We do need to talk about that. Well, I'm gonna take that back. You lose a lot of cargo space. It's considerable. In the Buick, and you can thank the sloped roof line. So 
yes, it's completely fashionable, but when it comes to function, it drops the ball. Fashionable and impractical. But it looks so good. It does look good, but yeah, uh, according to the notes here, you go down from 26 cubic feet with the seats up or 54 with them down to 21 cubic feet and 42 cubic feet. That is a pretty considerable difference, especially in a small car where you don't have a surplus of space to begin with. So if you think you're gonna be doing stuff like moving chairs and tables, uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to do with in the tracks. And not only does the tracks have more cargo space, but it's also easier to access with its wider opening. It's kind of a more conventionally shaped cargo space versus the opening for this one is kind of small and weirdly shaped like us. And the difference between the two, as I very quickly diverge from that, is with the Buick in true premium form, you can get a power lift gate, but in the Chevrolet tracks, it is manual only. Well, let's go to our snot yellow Chevy tracks and see how it is. I'll tell you what, I'll save it some time. We could drive all the way back there, grab the car and drive it back here, or I could just snap my fingers. Oh, just like that. Amazing. Way easier. And now we're in my favorite of the two, the Chevy Trax. Um, I like it for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's yellow, and yellow cars are just better. But you know you can get it in different colors. Is that true? It is absolutely true. Okay, but jokes aside, one thing about the active trim is that this yellow interior accents and the pinstriping and such is actually, no matter what color you get the car, it stays yellow. That's not a joke. I know. And if you get the RS, it's red, and it stays red. So you better like yellow, because if you get the active trim, you're gonna get it. Now, obviously some familiar sounds and sensations from that engine department because uh, it's the same. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same, although it technically is carrying 100 fewer pounds from the sound editing it doesn't have compared to the Buick, but otherwise uh, drives pretty similar. It should be 101 pounds if Buick bothered to put a back wiper on, but I digress. <laughs> yes, anyways, the, I'm, I have a wiper here that we can turn on right now. Look at that. <laughs> you can't, I'm gonna move what a concept, look at that. And that's the other thing is you can see back there because uh, the visibility is better because that's what you get when your car is shaped like a box. <laughs> As opposed to an oval. Exactly. I also think this interior with its yellow accents is fun. There's a bit of a difference between the infotainment screen and digital instrument cluster for both vehicles. Now, I know I said I like the Buick one because it's one long piece. My slight counterpoint to that against myself is with the Chevrolet, you do have a hood <laughs> over the instrument cluster, which is just rid of glare. And unfortunately, the Buick doesn't have it. Which is why it has to lean forward to prevent that, which means I always feel like I'm looking at it like on an angle. Which is a little peculiar, but screens are the name of the game in a lot of the new modern vehicles. So get used to it. And I think Mazda might be one of the few holdouts with their Mazda 3, with their CX-5, pretty much everything except the CX-90 and 70 to offer two analog dials out exactly. of the three dials. Other differences that we can feel and hear now that we're in the tracks instead of the Buick, it's louder. It's just, there's more road noise happening in this, despite the fact that it's kind of the same car. Uh, it's a boxier shape. Those tend to slide through the air with a bit more noise. And probably if I had to guess, just a little bit less sound deadening. But uh, on the long drive, uh, you would definitely notice it. And I can't say crank up the audio system to get rid of that noise because it's just not that good of an audio system. But you can always look into getting something aftermarket. But yeah, the, the sound system in either of these is, I would say, acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's not bad, but you're not gonna be like, wow, the quality in this is really good. You know, some cars are like sound overachievers. Honda Accord really punches out of its weight class for sound systems. Speaking of sounds, uh, let's give ourselves a quick test on what things sound like here. That's hard plastic. That's hard plastic. Basically, everything here is hard plastic. And yes, it may have a less than premium look and feel in both the Invista as well as the Chevrolet Trax. But again, I keep going back to it and I feel like a broken record, but consider the price point and consider the class of the vehicle. And you're not gonna to be touching the dashboard at all for that matter. And you're only gonna to touch the handle of the door to get in and out. So take from that what you will, it may have a less than premium look and feel to it, but it's still a lot of value to be had overall here. I think it's a huge value. Keep in mind this car starts at around 25,000, which is like the same price as a Nissan Kicks 
which has an interior made out of Legos. <laughs> like, this is another planet compared to the Kicks. And yes, the secondary touch surfaces like the lower dash are just straight up plastic, but guys, the cost savings have to come from somewhere. The money is being spent all around you. We have wireless Apple CarPlay. We have optional six speaker sound system. We've got turbo power and a six speed conventional automatic. You have wireless charging. You yeah. have heated seats up front in three stages. You have a heated steering wheel. You've got a long suite of safety systems that comes with the top trim. So I completely echo Clayton's point. Yeah, you're maybe losing a bit on the quality of materials, but the things that you actually use every day, heated are wheel, super heated seat, solid. absolutely. We talk about things like the heated seat, heated wheel, we're in the top trim active. So lower trims like the LS are not gonna necessarily have those things, but you're still gonna get the same engine, the same transmission. You're still gonna get, actually, every Chevrolet, even the cheapest ones all have CarPlay. Although, don't quote me, I don't know if they're all wireless. But you have CarPlay, you have phone connectivity, which is good because none of the cars we're driving today have a native navigation system. That's another thing that you're gonna live without. Uh, but you plug in your phone and that's how you're gonna navigate. Other, it's just the little things really for me. I like that the wheel is a good size. It's nice and thin. The sporty Buick has a D-shaped steering wheel like a Formula One car. Uh, this one is round. What a concept. Also as a great concept and one of my favorite pieces of automotive engineering, the volume controls and the seat tracks are on the back side of the wheel, just like Stellantis has. It took me a while to find them, but once I did, it's pretty intuitive. But I do like that they have included every car reviewer's favorite thing, a physical volume knob. Thank you, Honda, for not putting a volume knob in for a few years. and That lets us really appreciate every vehicle that has one. It's true. And even through these corners, even without that fancy Watts link rear suspension, the handling of this car is so good for the segment. It is mm -hmm. really, really good. I mean, to be fair, it's up against literally the worst handling cars that you can buy. The Nissan Kicks. I don't like the Kicks. This car is on 18 inch wheels. The RS comes on 19s. The ride ultimately is kind of another point that you, it does suffer. It's not, that smooth a ride compared to a hatchback. And this is the thing, when you get one of these small SUVs, this is a front wheel drive thing, it's a tall hatchback. When you get one of these SUV shapes, you compromise everything else for that shape for fashion. Right. You get, you get your fuel economy is not as good, your handling is not as good, and usually the space and utility of it is actually compromised all so that people can sit up high and look like they're gonna go on a trail. With the active trim, which is what we have, yes. Chevrolet says, well, maybe find a small trail <laughs> that's not too challenging. And that being the big difference between the active trim and the RS. As Clayton said, you get the larger wheels with the RS because it's more of a fancier, sophisticated thing. But all things aside, there's no bad vehicle out there. And I think the Chevy tracks for what it is and what it's designed to do. The handling is respectable. There's also the factor of price, but we can get more into that in the outro. But here's the thing. Both of these cars, could you live with this every single day? I could. Absolutely. Easily. It's such a great all-rounder. And I think that we're nitpicking things right now because that's our job to talk about the plastics and the seats and the volume knobs. But zooming out, this is such an actually a good car. Same with the Buick. They are actually good, good cars. On the practical side, because of its small footprint, it's easy to drive, it's easy to park, whether you're parking in forwards, reversing in, or parallel parking. Fuel consumption is pretty good. Again, considering the size of the engine, size of the vehicle, all your amenities are here. There's a nice long list of standard features. If you want more, by all means, bump up a couple of trims. But out of the box, base model in the Invista, base model in the tracks, it's hard to go wrong. They're both really good options. It kind of comes down to personal preference, but we're sticklers. We, one of them has to win. So I guess we got to go back to the parking lot and uh, figure it out. Figure it out. Do you think we should do an investigation? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it makes it in there. <laughs> I'm going to make tracks and get out of here. <laughs> So 
So we had a chance to drive them on some country roads, but we also off camera have been living with these for a week. We put some considerable miles on them. And in fact, you had the chance to drive this one through a snowstorm uh, a previous week. Everybody loves Windsor, everyone loves Detroit, and I gotta say, after doing about a thousand kilometers overall with it, I have no issues, and if I was specifically in the market for this specific type of vehicle, from this specific upscale, not luxury, not mainstream, but the in-between premium brand, this would be on my top three list. In fact, tell me which of these two you'd rather have in your personal driveway, with your own money, what would you put it down on? Absolutely the Buick. Did you want to take another half second to think about that? You just kind of went right to it. Because I know what I like. It looks absolutely stunning. It is unlike anything Buick has put out in the last decade. It is the best looking Buick you can buy today. And it's affordable. And it's got some really nice appointments throughout. Yes, it's got some hard plastics, but you're not always touching those hard plastics. I don't care what it looks like. I care how it drives. And that upgraded uh, Watts Link suspension, worth it eight days a week. Now that you know the innards of my thoughts for which car I'd have, which one would you rather have? Uh, firstly, I'd take some sunglasses. It's very bright. But if I had to pick amongst these two vehicles, I would take the Chevy Trax. I like it for a lot of reasons. First of all, it is cheaper and therefore I think a better value. You save $5,300 kind of across the board, trim to trim on the Chevy Trax. And for that lower price, you actually get more cargo capacity. You lose the sporty fastback roof line that you like a lot. And I admit it does look pretty cool, but it, it seriously limits your cargo space. And the cargo opening in the Trax is also a lot more functional. I also like that on the active trim, you get roof rails, which one could use to put a kayak on the top. Or two. Or two. So I like that too. Now there are some compromises I don't like as much. The Chevy Trax is louder on the highway. And even though they have the exact same stereo, we would both agree. The Buick sound system, to me, as someone who listens to music almost 25 hours a day. And plays music. And plays music is far superior. I don't know what the engineers did. We know they're the same system. You don't have to comment. We know, but we're telling you, it sounds better in the Buick. It, I don't know, things just sound better in the Buick. I don't know. Good job, Buick. So what do we got here? We got a car with better storage, that's noisier on the highway, which we would both agree is a better value, but it's also less stylish. We have to pick a winner here. We have to pick one of these two, but we're gonna change lanes very quickly. The best vehicle in this segment is a Mazda 3. And I know, I know, I know, it's not a subcompact crossover, but it does the same things these do. It's just a couple of inches lower to the ground. But if you need and want a subcompact crossover with a lifted ride height and a little more cargo space, I'm going with a Chevy Trax. Even though you personally prefer the Invista, I think we have to admit the Trax is better value, with what we'd both agree. $5,300 is a lot. Especially in this segment where, as a percentage, that's a lot bigger price difference than our usual test cars, which are in like the mid 40s. Simply put, there's no bad choice between these two. It's a matter of preference and what you like. If you want something a little more on the refined side, lean towards Buick. But if you want something utilitarian that looks at it on the funky side and know that you can get the RS trim if the active is just a little too active for you, the Chevy Trax is a fantastic fantastic value and it's helping to reinvent the once not so popular and littered with not so great vehicles segment. I agree, Jay. I think that the Trax is the winner of the comparison, but honestly, both of these cars are so far ahead of where the competition was even like five years ago. It is insane. Cars are getting so much better all the time. And at the end of the day, maybe we're all winners. For Driving.ca, I'm Jay Canna. And I'm Clayton Seams. And for more crossover comparisons and reviews, don't forget to check out our website at driving.ca and leave a comment down below as to what we should compare next. And you can also tell us on our social media platforms. We are on Facebook and Instagram and X, even though we shouldn't be. Call it Twitter. <laughs>